In this tutorial, I will show you how to use Blender's snapping feature, and I'll show you the different cases of why you might want to use it. So to turn on the snapping feature, you can click on this little magnet button right here on the top of the 3D viewport. Now the shortcut key is Shift Tab, so you can press Shift Tab to toggle on and off the snapping feature. Now next to the magnet icon, you can see that there are some different settings, and I'll be going over most of these settings in this video. But on default, you can see the Snap 2 is set to increment, and so this is going to snap the objects to increments when you transform them. So if I just select this cube, I can press G to grab, and you can see it's kind of moving along this grid here. And so that is the cube moving along the increments in the 3D viewport. Now if you have the snapping feature turned off and you start to move this, you can hold down the control key and the control key is going to do the same thing. So let's say that I want the snapping feature turned off, but just really quick I want to move the cube over by increments. As I'm moving it, I can just hold down the control key and then I can drag and then place it there and then let go of the control key. And that's just a really quick way to move something over by increments. But let's turn the snapping feature back on. So this snapping feature is very helpful if you want some more precise modeling. For instance, maybe I want to move this cube over and then I want to duplicate another cube but I want to have it exactly next to the other cube I can press shift D to duplicate and I can move this over here and so instead of hand placing them it's moving over by these increments and so we can move them exactly over by the size of the cube now if I rotate the cube or scale the cube, you can see it is moving smoothly. And that is because right here on the snapping feature, you can see the effect, it's set to move on default. But I could also turn on rotation and scale. And this way it'll use the increments for scaling and the same thing for rotating. So you can turn on any combination of these. You could just use one of them, so just use the scale, rotate, or move. But you can turn these on and off depending on what you're doing. Now when the snapping is enabled, it's actually going to be moving by the measurements in Blender. And to see the measurements in Blender, you can click right over here on the scene properties, and then you can open up the units. And on default, it is using the metric system. Now I am American, I live in the US, so it makes more sense for me if I turn on the imperial because that's going to use feet and inches. But you could of course just leave this at metric if you wanted to. And so when I move an object, now right up here in the top left, it'll actually show you how much it's moving by. Now I can also change change the unit scale. So if I just turn this unit scale way up, now if I move this you can see the increments are much smaller. Whereas if I turn this like way down, make it less than one, now if I move this you can see the increments are much bigger. So it's going to move depending on the size of the unit system in Blender. Now another reason why the increment movements can be so helpful is when you're modeling something like a plank tower. And I use this method in my plank tower tutorial, and if you'd like to check out that tutorial I'll have the link in the description. And in that tutorial, to model the plank tower, I needed all the planks to be sitting right on top of each other. And so the snapping feature was super useful for this. Now this snapping feature is also super useful when you are using modular assets. And modular assets are different models and assets that you can join together and they will connect seamlessly. And so a while back I created a tutorial on how to create low poly city assets. I'll have a link in the description if you'd like to check out that video. And in the video I showed you how to create these three different street objects. And so these objects are modular, meaning that they can connect at the ends and then you can basically build a low poly road for your city. So I have the snapping feature turned Turned on, and because of that, I will press 7 on the numpad to go to top view, and I can just move this around, and you can see it's going to move by increments, and so I can just stick that right there, and it's going to be at the exact correct spot. So now it looks like these are connecting. Then I can select this object here, I can move this over, and again, because the objects are going to snap, it'll fit seamlessly. And so this is super helpful if you have modular assets or modular models that you want to mix together. And I can very quickly create a cool street there for the city. Now as well as the snapping feature snapping to increments, you can also use the snapping feature to snap your selection to any of these other options. So for instance, we have vertex. So what I can do is now just select this other object here. This is just a cylinder that I have, and I can press G to grab and I can move this around and it's going to snap to a vertex of another object. So you can see the vertices of this cube are kind of on the edges. So if I bring this over to a cube, it's going to snap to the edge of that cube. I could also change this to edge and if I do this, it's going to snap to an edge. Now the vertex and edge are pretty useful, but if I want to snap an object onto the face of another object, then I usually use the face project. So I can now move this around and you can see it's going to snap to that face. So if I like bring this down here, you can see it's actually going in the cube, but it is snapping to that face. I could also bring it up
up here and it's going to snap to the face. Now there's a problem with this and you can see sometimes it's not really going where I want. So instead of it going on the outside of the cube, it's going on the inside. And so to fix this, we can use the snap with settings. So the first one here is closest and so it's just going to snap it to the closest spot. And so because this cylinder was kind of brought down here, it's now the closest point. So it's going to be inside the cube. If I just bring this up though and then do it again, you can see it's going to move that closest point because it was higher up. So to change this, I can click right up here and I could change it to the center instead. And this way, now if I snap it to the face, it's going to be snapped to the center of the cylinder. And I use this method to add some sci-fi bolts to my mech robot in my sci-fi mech robot tutorial series. So if you'd like to check out that tutorial series, I'll have the link in the description. And as you can see, I use that method to put a bunch of little bolts all over the sci-fi robot. So I could just duplicate this and I could bring it over here and make like another one. I could also duplicate this and put a few more here. Now, as well as the snap with center, there is also median. And so this is going to snap to the median point of the object. So if I tab to go into edit mode, I can move the object over in edit mode. And because I'm moving the mesh over in edit mode, you can see the origin point is right there. So if I tab to go back to object mode, I can now press G to grab and I can move this around and you can see it's going to move by the median point. And then there's also snap with active, and this is if you're moving multiple objects. So I have this cylinder here and then I also have this cube and right here on the snapping I have this set to active. So if I select both of these objects by holding down the shift key, this object was the last object that I selected and I know that because it has a yellow outline whereas these objects have an orange outline. So even though both of the objects are selected, this one is the active object. So if I now press G to grab, I can move this around and you can see it's basically going to ignore the cube, it's going to ignore the location of the cube and it's just going to snap using the cylinder. However, if I hold down the shift key and then select the cube, the cube now has the yellow outline and so it is the active object that's selected even though the cylinder is also selected. So I can now press G to grab and you can see it's now going to snap to the center of the cube. Now while I'm moving the cylinder, let's say that I want it to rotate with the rotation of the face. So if I move this, you can see it's not actually rotating to the rotation of the face, and the same thing is happening here when I put it on this sphere. And if I click right up here on the snapping features, I do have it affect the move, rotate, and scale. But in order to get this object to rotate, when I move it, what I need to do is click right up here, and then I need to click on the align rotation to target. So once you turn on the align rotation to target, I can now move this and you can see it's going to actually rotate it depending on the rotation of the face. So you can see if I move it over here, now it's pointing this way, or now it's pointing up, or now it's pointing on here on the side. Now I've been using this snapping feature in object mode, but this snapping feature also works in edit mode. So if I go into edit mode, you can see I can move this around and it's going to do the same thing. And if I like selected this face and duplicated it, you can see it's going to do the same thing. And you could also do the same thing for vertices. So if I like select this vertex and I duplicate it, you can see I can snap it to the face. Or if I click right up here, I'm going to change this to increment instead and I can move the vertex up and it's going to be moving by the increments. And the same thing goes for the face. So basically just whatever you have selected. So I have a circle here and I am in edit mode and what I'm going to do is give this more geometry just by insetting the faces a bunch of times. So let's say that I want to snap this object onto the faces of this sphere here. Well in edit mode I can press G to grab and I can move this over and you can see it's going to snap to the faces. But you can see that it's moving the entire object at once. So what I can do is I can click right up here on the snapping feature. I have this set to face project, but then what I can do is I can click on the project individual elements. And so this way it's going to snap each vertex individually instead of just snapping the entire object. So I can press G to grab and I can move this around and you can see it is now snapping to the shape of that object. So it's curving around. And then I could tab to go back to object mode and then just to be able to see this, I could go to the modifiers and I could add the solidify modifier and I could just bring this up to make it thicker. So you can now see that this object has been placed onto the sphere and it is rotated around. Now usually if I were gonna do something like this, I would wanna use the shrink wrap modifier instead because the shrink wrap modifier works much better, but in some cases you might wanna use the snapping. And then one more thing before we finish up this video, if you click right up here on the snapping options, you can hold down the shift key and and you can click on these different options. So if I hold down the shift key, I can select the vertex and the edge and the face, 
and this way it's going to snap to all three of them. So I can now press G to grab and I can move this around. You can see it's snapping on the face and I can also move it right here if I want to snap it to an edge or a vertex. Or I could also like click right here. I could hold down the shift key and deselect the face project and then this way it's only going to snap to edges or vertices. So that is the basics of how to use Blender's snapping feature. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support my channel I will have links in the description to my Gumroad store and my Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. But I hope this helps and thank you for watching.